Hi, I'm Valder Beebe, and I host the Valder Beebe Show on FM radio and internet television. I am famously known for that celebrity interview, which I conduct by cell phone, in studio, or satellite media tours. Go to ValderBeebeShow.com, YouTube.com slash Show, or our partnership network with Business in the Black, which is BlackSuccessAcademy.com, and click on the Valder BB Show channel. I'll see you there. I'm very blessed. Thank you for joining us on the Valder BB Show. As I understand, June is a month dedicated to raising awareness of the plight of the world's thousands of refugees. You know, I found and I know that many of them live in camps with no means of a normal life and with no hope. But you're here to give us a ray of sunshine. You are a refugee yourself, if I'm correct? Uh, that's correct. Okay. So this is a passion for you, or you know how it is to help someone who needs help. Uh, that's true, uh, and I've been doing it for the last seven years. I've uh, been a refugee myself. Uh, I've been going through what you mentioned, living in a refugee camp and moving from country to country. And the need of helping refugee and the support that they need is immense uh, to this. Um, I tried to do what I could in, uh, through organizations on a personal capacity, uh, mostly by advocating at a local, national, and international level been a voice uh, for refugees. Did you emerge as a voice or was this uh, like you had a, a career prior to coming to being a refugee that allowed you to know that you had to speak up? How did you know to speak up? So um, I, I left my country in 2005 and I was er Eritrea in Northeast Africa, a small country, Eritrea. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there is indefinite national service and the government is dictatorship. Hence, we try to uh, stay away from the government and in fear of persecution, we flee the country. Um, and in that process, I also uh, went to South Africa for better safety and to uh, persuade, uh, pursue my education. Uh, while I was there, I continued to lose a lot of my friends. Uh, they tried to make uh, the perilous journey of the Mediterranean Sea in unsafe boats, uh, and this got me to do something about it. Uh, and in, being in South Africa, I did my BA, I was working as an engineer, uh, but I saw I could be much better used uh, if it, I could have advocate for the uh, refugee crisis that's going on. Uh, and yes, uh, I studied at the university and uh, I saw the need. Uh, and a need that could not wait, and that's how I get involved. Okay, tell us about the refugee flag. You want us to know about this flag and what it symbolizes, because a flag gives identification to something, like the United States flag. Whenever you see that flown anywhere, you know, uh, in foreign countries, it's a safe haven. We know it's American flag. So what is this refugee flag, and what is it symbolizing for us? So as I say, that recognition is very important, and this is uh, came as a result to recognize refugee uh, with their own uh, flag, a symbol about unity for refugees throughout the world. Uh, it was uh, designed by creative uh, individuals and refugees, uh, and including refugees. Uh, the flag is orange with a black stripe uh, on the bottom part of it. Uh, it represents the life vest refugee where uh, they try to cross perilous seas uh, to get to a safe place. Uh, last year, for the first time at the Rio Olympics, we have about uh, 10 refugees who participated at uh, the Olympics. Uh, they did not have any flag or anthem uh, while they were participating or they making uh, walking into the stadium. Hence, uh, such kind of participation also uh, increased the need and the urgency to have refugees, their own symbol and their own representation. 
let me ask you. I'm going to ask you later on, and I want my audience to stay connected with me, you know, where we can find more information. But before I ask you that, as a refugee, give me a little bit of insight. What is it like not to have a home? And also, too, in your plight, are you guys praying? Are you believing in God? Are you believing for 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 um, uh, being safe? And I'm asking because I don't know. Okay, well, being a refugee, the life looks like uh, it's a life lived in limbo. Uh, you don't have ownership of your life. You cannot plan uh, because, as you know, most refugees live in third world countries, in refugee camps, uh, and they are not entitled to leave those camps. Hence, they wait for donor organizations for their day-to-day meal or maybe for resettlement to be resettled elsewhere. So they cannot be the champion of their life. It's not a life where this is what I want to do and I'm out there to find how I could do it. Your life is pretty much in the hands of organizations. Why? Because the system made it, not because you want to be like that. Uh, So you don't have control of the future. You don't have control of your life. Uh, It's a life. uh, The average person waits about 17 years in refugee camps before they could have a decent life. So you could imagine generations uh, living in refugee camps without any making any uh, progress in their lives or having to own their future. Um, When it comes to uh, the question of do you pray, obviously you pray because uh, as you can see today, even the world seems to run away, uh, society seems to run away from helping the refugee over the media over the last few years, what we've been hearing is that negative connotation, negative message about refugees, which is entirely not true. Uh, We've seen elections after elections in the United States, Brexit, uh, portraying refugees as criminals and terrorists, which is another case. Uh, Refugees are, in fact, uh, victims of such uh, situations. And you you are left in uh, believing in your God and hoping for miracle and uh, something to happen uh, and obviously uh, we should recognize countries that are doing immense work when it comes to health and refugee like uh, Germany, Canada and many organizations and coast guards in the Mediterranean Sea to trying to save lives but again uh, we're talking about 65 million displaced people 21 to, 21 to 22 million refugees specifically um, and little has been done uh, into trying to help uh, the need that's out there. So for most refugee, yeah, uh, I think, including myself, uh, yes, we pray, with, yes, we rely on the bigger picture of God, and uh, you look for hope uh, somehow to exist and uh, to come your way. I want my audience to care because we pray in America, I think the vast majority of people And I want them to include the refugees, and I want them to include you, Marin, in our prayers as of this day forward. Where can my audience go and find more information? Uh, Generally speaking on refugees, uh, people can go to websites like the UNHCR. Uh, It's a refugee-led organization under the United Nations. Uh, they can go to Catholic Charities, IRC, uh, that are local organizations helped in uh, resettling refugees, also international. Uh, for the Refugee Nation, they can go to the refugeenation.org. Uh, there is a refugee flag. If they get to buy the refugee flag, um, directly or indirectly, that money goes to be uh, helping refugees out there. Uh, and they can go uh, to the, the www. The refugee Nation. Uh, dot org website. Marin, we say a prayer for you, and I ask that my country be more compassionate. We're a country made up of immigrants, and that should not change. And I ask that we find compassion in our hearts and put aside all the things that we feel and help our fellow human beings. Marin, I want to thank you so very much for being so wonderful in talking about your plight. Would you please come back and let us know and kind of keep this in front of us so that we can continually deal with our conscience? Oh, yeah, definitely. And and thank you for the prayer. Uh, and, and thank you for having me on your program. I, I am the one who is far better for having spoken to you about this topic. 
Thank you very much for being my guest on the Valder BB Show. Thanks.